Hey guys and welcome to another Saudi Arabia coronavirus vlog. Today is April 11th. It is 5.47 p.m. I'm just exhausted today. I don't know why. Uh, now that I'm now that we're not really doing anything, we're just sitting at home most of the day. I don't know why we're so tired, but that's it. Um, let's talk about some of the figures. A little bit of bad news out of Saudi Arabia. We have our third day in a row uh, setting records for the number of new cases. We are up 382 total cases for a total of 4,033. Of these 382 new cases, 131 are Mecca, 95 in Medina, Riyadh had 76, 50 in Jeddah, 15 in Dammam and 5 in Yanbu. That's a port city on the west coast, I believe. All right, so, and the world, the world total. Actually, no, let's talk about recoveries. Saudi Arabia had 35 more recoveries, bringing them to 720, and 5 more deaths, bringing them to 52. The world had a increase of about 90,000 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, bringing the world total to 1.72 million total confirmed cases. All right, uh, let's get into some of the news. Not that much um, on my roof today. We're going to go downstairs in a minute, and I'll show you some footage that I took walking through downtown Kamis Mushait. Um, but first, a few things, two pieces of news. The, uh, the OSP, the, uh, the starting price for oil um, in May, that is, Saudi Arabia announces earlier the, the month previously what the, the selling prices for crude oil will be um, the following month. Now, they usually came out on March, not March, on the April 5th or whatever the fifth day of the month is. So I hear some something. Um, planes or something but I I can't see them so um, but then because of the oil war they and because OPEC plus was meeting on the 10th um, they said or the 9th 9th the 9th they said that they would release the figures on the 10th and then they didn't and uh, they said they're gonna re release them tomorrow Sunday April 12th instead so a week later than they usually do because they're still trying to uh, hash out a final oil agreement um, and uh, the from the Ministry of Health spokesman Dr. Muhammad Ali Abdel Ali uh, he recently announced yesterday or today that 70 to 80 percent of the recent cases of coronavirus here in Saudi Arabia um, are non-Saudi. I'm not sure exactly what recent um, qualifies as, but anyway, so let's take a look at uh, this next video. Okay guys, so I wanted to show a video of, uh, this is some footage that I took downtown in Kamis Mushait. Um, it's kind of, uh, you can see it's at a bad angle, it's very wobbly it's not well taken footage um, I did take this today on April 11th 2020 um, but f for starters I should say that most people um, in Saudi Arabia or at least in Kamis do not like having their video or picture taken so this is not me walking around you know beautifully framing these pictures and videos um, in, in such a way that everything looks clear and beautiful so it is wobbly I have used some uh, video stabilization to hopefully improve the quality of this video a little bit uh, if this is just makes you have a headache or makes you I don't know you just can't really watch it then just click away it's fine skip to the end of the video where I answer some questions so let's just get some narration going so usually on these patches of fake grass, this green turf, um, there are usually, I don't know, 100, 150 um, Indians, Pakistanis, Afghanis, all sorts of assorted laborers and uh, people just kind of hanging out. 
Now you can see no one is, is sitting here. I, I don't know if they were told off by the police or if they just didn't come here um, anymore. You can see there are still lots of people um, downtown, though, a fair amount anyway, uh, walking around. And uh, you can just see if they're wearing masks or not wearing masks. Now, um, so you can see some stores that are open. There's a, a shoe store that's still open. Um, and uh, usually there are, are guys in some of the corners or even some stores selling sandals or these guys will just unroll a rug on the ground and just put out a bunch of sandals and other things for sale. Um, they're, they're all gone now. It's only the official stores that are still open. Um, but you can see lots of people walking around. You know, this guy's got a mask on. Um, I would say mask wearing in Kamis is probably at about 50% of these guys. You can count them yourself. Um, and here, just a pretty crowded um, alleyway. And some more guys wearing masks of various kinds. Some people choosing not to wear the mask. Um, I don't know if they can't get them or what's going on. Um, yeah, you can see those guys, they're not wearing masks. Um, so, wow, this beautiful storefront. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you just have to uh, make it seem like you're not filming people so that you don't get into trouble. I don't think there's a law against uh, filming in public, but definitely would get me into, uh, people would get angry at me anyway. So you can see there are a lot of storefronts that are closed. I filmed this around 1 o'clock p.m., so not too long after the midday prayer. Um, so maybe it's possible some of these stores have not reopened. That's a pharmacy there um, that is open, and uh, some kind of electronic store is still open. Uh, uh -huh. I don't read Arabic uh, very well, so I don't know what all of these stores are supposed to be. Now, if you were thinking, wow, this is Saudi Arabia, I thought it was going to be a little bit more glitzy and rich and glamorous. Well, Asir province in the southwest of Saudi Arabia is not one of these big oil-rich uh, sections of the country. Those are mostly on the Gulf Coast, on the eastern coast, and so um, it's just not a super wealthy area. Not that it's poor, but it's just not quite uh, swimming in wealth like Riyadh, Jeddah, Dammam. Uh, and so forth. It is a pretty big tourist uh, hub for Saudi Arabia, especially in the summer when people like to come to uh, the mountains and the beaches even. Um, okay, so here we just see some more um, some more people. Uh, truck. This is kind of like a big parking lot area. Oh, there's a traffic policeman. Um, I don't know what they're doing in that truck, but anyway, um, yeah, so we just see some stuff's going on and uh, some closed stores are, are not open. Um, I don't know what all of these stores are. This one says, please, ma'am. I haven't the faintest idea what they sell. Um, diamond techs. I wouldn't buy my diamonds there. Um, <laughs> okay, so we just see some more traffic. You know, pretty much business as usual. Um, with some of the stores closed and some people wearing masks and certain people not gathering in certain areas. Um, it's possible that there are a lot of people downtown now because they know that in two hours the curfew is going to start and they'll all have to go back to their homes. Um, some of the, especially some of these migrant laborers, they might live uh, se several people to one room so you can imagine that uh, spending, you know, seven hours in the evening together in the same house might be uh, kind of miserable. So get outside while you can, perhaps. Um, all right, now some more closed stores. Wow, aren't you glad that you're spending some of your valuable time watching this shaky video? Uh, wow, so shaky. Sorry about that, but that's just how it is. All right. Um, I do try to hold it kind of steady, but oh, and there's a garbage, two two dumpsters. 
a lot of dumpsters like that around the town um, for just people passing by to dump their stuff in. Um, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, so just, you know, when, when you're filming kind of sneakily, you just can't, uh, you can't always get Hollywood shots. Sometimes you just get some real boring, um, boring, boring shots. I don't know what's going on here. Some kind of little construction. Wearing masks. Paris Corner. I don't know what they sell there. Uh, Royal Gift Shop. I don't remember ever going into that. I feel like I'm on a boat watching this. A bunch of waves coming and tipping. Um, all right, let's try and cross the street here in a second. There we go. People just kind of cross the streets whenever they feel like it here. Um, some more closed places. This, uh, this restaurant, or, oh, that's a pharmacy. Um, some more fellas out here. Arab watches, that's closed. So you can see some of these guys wearing the masks. Some of them are not. Um, yeah. This restaurant is always closed. It hasn't been open the whole time I've been here. Um, another guy with the mask. But some of these people, they don't cover their nose with the mask. They uh, just wear it right below the nose. And that doesn't really do anything, obviously. Um, so, yeah, you see you know, some of these people are standing fairly close to each other. Um, Fruit markets, these are pretty common, downtown anyway. Um, now we're, we're entering one of these uh, more narrow alleys. Uh, you can try and pause the video if you want to like get a, a good glimpse at it. It's uh, very shaky, so it might be a little hard for you to see what's going on. Um, yeah, so stuff like this, there's another little guy selling melons and, and a bunch of other fruits. Um, you know, sometimes people going around touching these fruits with that, with their hands, um, and then not wearing masks. It could be one reason why uh, why the COVID-19 is spreading. I don't really know. Um, I ha haven't gone downtown in about uh, almost a month uh, until I f went downtown today to film this video. Um, so I don't really have a good on the on the ground downtown. Um, perspective but if other cities and towns and provinces around the kingdom are acting like this then uh, that could be one reason why new cases keep appearing and you can see right yeah right there I'm just sort of like in the reflection you can see how I'm holding the uh, my, my phone and uh, we're coming to the end of, of the videos I, I took so let's just uh, quickly wrap this up if you have any questions you want me to answer um, just let me know in, in the comments and uh, so that's a very bad tour of downtown Camis um, so anyway that's pretty much all I got for this video about 10 minutes worth of footage not very good I'm sorry about the wobbliness but that's just the way it is All right, now uh, here's a little surprise at the end of the video. I uh, wanted to just take a few minutes and uh, answer some of the questions and comments that I got on the last video. I got a lot of comments, 11 comments, or 10 comments. Um, and I'll answer some of these tomorrow, but I figured I'd answer a couple of them today. So uh, yesterday, yesterday I mentioned that I didn't find any eggs when I went to the supermarket. Uh, somebody says, I also didn't find eggs at three of the markets near my house yesterday, uh, but today. I did, I live in Riyadh, but today I did. I live in Riyadh. Okay, so uh, another, another person who uh, had trouble getting eggs, another person um, said, there's no shortage of eggs supply. I asked a cashier in a grocery store near my house and he said they are hiding them and then selling them to legit customers because some fools are buying in large quantities, trying to make a black market and selling them with higher prices. The Minister of Commerce said we had self-sufficiency of eggs since 2016. How come we have a shortage? 
And then he goes on to ask, how long do you think the fear of COVID-19 will last in which somebody will say, this took a long time and I don't care anymore, I'm going to travel or I'm going outside of my home for a picnic, et cetera, et cetera. Because obviously this won't end soon and people are started, starting to be frustrated from staying home. So that's a great comment, great question. Um, so thank you for those comments and questions. If you have any comments you want me to, to answer, let me know in the comments below and I'll answer them in the next video or in the comments. Uh, the question being, how long is the fear going to last? It's going to last for years. Um, I feel pretty confident in saying that people are going to hold this against China or America or Germany or Italy or Iran for years to come. And uh, people will avoid um, go doing tourism in so many of these places, I think. And uh, the, the airline industry will take years to recover from the, the bad reputation that the coronavirus has, has inflicted. Um, when are people going to say, this took too long, I don't care, I'm going outside? Um, good question. Um, it depends in where, where you are and where in the world and uh, what your personal situation is like. Uh, because a lot of people who are not introverts, they won't put up with this. They are already going crazy at home somewhere and uh, they need to get out. They need to socialize. Um, not, that's not something that I've had a problem with really, but for a lot of people it is. Um, I think those people are generally speaking never going to uh, really self-isolate. These are people who are still going outside and hanging out and breaking um, you know, all sorts of social distancing taboos and not wearing masks and you know, not particularly uh, cleaning their hands well. I think in a large scale, in America anyway, that the people will, I don't know if I would say if riot is the best word or protest, but people eventually, I would say within, let's see, it's April now, within two months or three months at, at the longest, people will not put up with this, especially when they need uh, to go outside to places to work, to get money, to pay rent, to buy food, supplies, and other things. Um, how long will that last in Saudi Arabia, being told to self-quarantine? Uh, well, you saw from the video that I uh, that you just saw from me, me walking around downtown that I don't think it's going to be a, a big problem here in the kingdom. But for other places, it could be. So thanks for your question, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay home, stay safe, wash your hands, and eat well.